Let's play one of my favorite games, Big Plane, Little Plane, Winding Sticks. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to talk about flattening a bench top. Now I've been working on this bench for a while and you want to see the build thus far. Uh, you can see that up in the cards or down below. I'll have a link to the videos I've been actually building this. But I finally got to the point where I need to actually flatten it. So I want to kind of show what I do for flattening a bench. It's fairly simple once you understand the basics. You have to know where it is high and take that off and where it's low and not take that off and kind of go back and forth until you get a nice clean flat surface. So let's take a look at this and see what, we all, what all we need to do and have a little bit of fun. I like to do most of my flattening before I put the legs on. Uh, this way I have a generally flat surface that I can measure off of making markings and things like that. In this case, I'm using a scrub plane to knock off all of the glue squeeze out, a few boards that are higher than others. Um, I made a video a while ago about making a scrub plane out of an old hand plane that was uh, badly used, but it goes fairly quickly and removes a lot of material fast. Next up, I'm going to use a flat straight edge to find out where are the high spots. And I'll go across the grain and with the grain with the straight edge and kind of mark them out and learn about the board. Winding sticks are also extremely useful here. You can see if the board itself has any twist. In this case, I had a little bit of a twist uh, with high spot from corner to corner and low spot in opposite corners. From here on out, it's just about hitting the high spots and leaving the low spots alone. Um, th focus on the high spots and then eventually everything comes down to the same depth. After hitting all of the high spots that I found from the twist, I can do a final pass all the way across the board, traversing across with the scrub plane, basically bringing everything into a fairly smooth, fairly flat surface. And this will be about it before putting the legs on. Um, other than to make sure that everything is the way it is and make sure I'm getting what I was expecting about getting. And it's ready to install the legs and do the joinery. One of the great benefits of doing this beforehand is I can actually measure off of it so when I put the legs on I know that everything is the way it's supposed to be. Next up, once the legs are on, I can actually pull out my joiner plane and traverse across the grain. I'm actually going to go at about a 45 degree angle and this way I can make sure that the front and back are flat um, to each other. And then uh, once I do that for a while, I'll then just flip it so I'm going 45 degrees the opposite direction. And that gets it fairly flat because you're skipping over the low points and just hitting the high points with that. I'll go at it with a pencil um, and make sure that I can hit all of it. In this case, I had a little bit of a twist still from corner to corner. So I'm actually going to be marking out those two corners what I want to hit and I'll make sure I get all that pencil mark gone. <laughs> but uh, it's fairly straightforward. Still just hitting the high spots, learning about it, using the winding sticks, using the straight edges, um, and then cleaning it down. Once I've gotten it fairly flat by going 45 degrees one way and 45 degrees the other way, then I'll come in and go with the grain and flatten it out end to end. And if you've done your work, you should already be getting fairly straight curls all the way from end to end. And uh, that's about it for actually flattening it. The last step I'll do is come at it with my smoothing plane, which is very, very finely set plane, um, tight mouth, close chip breaker, and the curls coming off of this are really, really fine and thin. I have a video on setting up a smoothing plane, and once you do that, it's just so much fun to see these curls coming out and having a lot of fun on it. So that's about it. It's a fairly simple process and not too much if you know what you're getting into. There you go. I have a flat surface and I am ready for working. And now I can build things on top of my bench and I am in love with it. So this is, this is a lot of fun for me. Now, one of the questions a lot of people are going to ask is how flat is flat and really whatever you want. Um, if you like it, then that's great. Um, some people are very, very picky about it. And this has to be within a few thousands over the total distance of it. But in all honesty, this is wood. It's going to move. It's going to warp. It's going to change. And that's that's fine. And you're going to put dings in it and you're going to scratch it up and you're going to wear off a corner. Um, oh well, that's the way things go. It's a workbench. It's not a piece of art. It's not something that's supposed to be perfect forever. Um, it's something that is going to be moving and changing over time. So basically, I know that this entire bed is flat within, 
about a 64th at any given point. Um, so it, it's fairly flat. Now, most people that is nowhere near flat enough, but for me, that's perfectly fine. I don't need it to be any more flat than that. Um, I, in all honesty, if this was out an eighth inch from corner to corner, um, that really would not cause any problem at all for me. Um, uh, it's just not something you ever really need to have a bench that flat. So I hope that answered a few questions and I had a lot of fun with this and I hope you did too. If you did, please hit like and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to see some behind the scenes footage, I've got another second channel over here that has a lot of other information like that. Also, I do want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are really the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out more information about that, you can do so right down here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.